All right, welcome. Um, so this is COP361, navigating the AWS Security Control Toolbox. Uh, so let's get started. In today's rapid and uh, always evolving cloud environment, it is crucial to maintain a proper security posture, right? But we kind of recognize that it's very daunting to navigate all the different options that we may have. In today's session, we're going to cover and we're going to focus in three main categories or three main services and that you can leverage in order to pr provide those secure environments that we need. Uh, my name is Rodolfo Bremens. I'm a principal solutions architect and I focus in governance and compliance. And we're going to go through the main services that I mentioned. We're going to cover AWS Config, AWS Organization Policies, and CloudFormation Guard as the mechanisms that we can leverage. I had those integrate together with the different services that we have. Hopefully, by the end of the session, you will have a comprehensive understanding of where you can start and how you can leverage these services. What we're going to cover here today is, of course, an introduction. We're going to go through the main challenges that we see our customers uh, have. Then we're going to see the governance services that are applicable to security in this particular case, the different implementation options that we have, and a small demo at the end. Every organization is different, and every organization may have different objectives. But like our very own Mark Swat said, governance must balance two key objectives. It must control, but at the same time, it must enable. We don't want our customers or our users to lose the agility that brought you to AWS in the first place. So what we're trying to provide customers the capability for them to have a proper, well-governed environment, a landing zone, that they can just focus on innovation and keep moving. Let's start with the challenges for controls as a topic. The first challenge that we see our customers is that they feel that they are overwhelmed by all the different perspectives that are available uh, in AWS. The second one is fragmentation. Even though you have different controls that you can apply, those span from different uh, domains. Like, for example, you can have security controls, you can have cost optimization controls, you can have different types of needs from compute, uh, databases, and so on. So navigating these and how those are fragmented is, is very hard. The third one is complexity. Uh, understanding how all those services work together could be very complex and it's very challenging. And the, 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 la the last one, the fourth one, is how do you govern this at scale? How do you make sure that your current environment and the security mechanisms and controls that you have in place are growing along together with your cloud infrastructure? So keeping that pace and how you can leverage things like organizations to take advantage of this and not focus like in member accounts, specific permissions that you want to leverage. So this is the four challenges that we see. Now, Let's get started with the list of services that support governance and compliance. Depending on what your needs are, we recommend for you to start like defining the requirements, right? You need to understand what are the policies and the strategies that you want to follow, and what are the services that can support you to do those such things, and what are the, let's say, solutions that are available within, within AWS. The second one is how do you deploy and operate those controls? We have multiple services, and I mentioned this is part of the challenges when, we, when customers start focusing on this and how they can leverage them. They ask, you know, okay, which service should I use? So this is where our, we are here to help today. And the third one is how do you measure and, ass and assess those mechanisms that you have in place? How do you make sure that those are working properly and how do you can actually keep evolving those as time goes by? And today, we're going to focus on the services that allows you to deploy controls. The first one is Control Tower as an orchestrator, and we're not going to dive too much on Control Tower, but keep in mind that this is a service that allows you to actually orchestrate this on a managed way, how you can deploy these controls from a central, uh, from a central place. We're going to look into AWS organizations, uh, cloud formation capabilities for you to run proactive controls, for example, and then config rules for an AWS config, and how it can be aggregated and integrated with other services, like in this case, Security Hub. Now, Let's talk about how those controls are applied in three main different pillars. The first one are preventative controls. Here we have controls that can enforce in a specific baseline to completely avoid any misconfiguration that goes out of compliance in one of your policies. We have service control policies that maybe a lot of you are already very familiar with. These are services, these are kind of mechanisms and guardrails that are applicable to the identities on your and in your AWS organization. Then we have resource control policies. So this is basically how, this is actually a policy that was launched a, a little bit over a week now. This is very new. That allows you to actually have not just the controls that you used to have in identities and service control policies, but moving those to the resources section. And we're going to look at how that works. And the last one is declarative, declarative policies. This is a way for you to enforce a specific guardrails 
and baselining to actual configuration on your resources and how you can do those from the organization itself. Currently at launch, this was released on Sunday. Basically, we cover AC2 attributes, and we're going to look on how that looks. The second one for the detecting mechanism, these are safeguards that you have in place. If something goes out of compliance, how do you actually detect those changes that are not desired, it's not a status that you want in your resources? The, the way to do this is with AWS config rules, and we're going to see on how that looks and how to integrate with things, how to empower a lot of other services. It's at the very core, at the working at the back end of multiple other services. In this case, because we're talking about security, we're going to focus on how to integrate with Security Hub. But keep in mind that it also empowers other services, like for example, Trusted Advisor, Network Firewall Manager, those kind of things. And the third one is proactive controls. How you can actually leverage an infrastructure as code, make sure that you run the net required evaluations to avoid something from being out of compliance. Now, one of the things that we get these days is how do you work together with service control policies and resource control policies? Keep in mind that we, well, service control policy has been there for a long time and basically focus on enforces consistent control access to the principles of your organization. Keep in mind that, for example, you want to limit the amount of actions that a particular principle or identity can perform within your organization, you will go with service control policies. If you want to have some kind of perimeter in, in consuming resources outside of your org, you go with SCPs. Resource control policies is bringing this to that resource level. How do you can enforce consistent access controls to the resources in your organization. Now, you, if you want to provide some kind of mechanism, some kind of data perimeter uh, discussion or requirement into your resources, you go with resource policies right there in the member account. So you need to actually work around that in order to provide the perimeter that you need. Now, with resource control policies, you can enforce that at the organization level to the organizational units that you need, so you don't have to be concerned about what is being actually configured or at the resource level on every account. You can enforce this centrally. The main use case for resource control policies are data perimeter controls. In this case, we are having an example on how SCPs and RCPs are working together. If you go with, RC with our RCPs, it doesn't mean that you don't need SCPs. It's just that those are for different use cases that could actually give you a comprehensive solution. In this case, we have a corporate user that through SCPs, we are defining what we call a resource perimeter. So a, a resource perimeter is basically telling the corporate user that it cannot access non-corporate resources outside the org. So this is when we can have some kind of data perimeter with SCPs. But what happens if we have an, uh, a resource living in our organization, and I want to, for, to have like a perimeter that no external users can access it. And that's when the resource policies uh, help us to have an identity perimeter on that particular. So this is how they work together. This, uh, the main use cases for RCPs are actually these kind of data perimeters requirements that customers see very often. Now, taking into how declarative policies for EC2 work. Now, declarative policies, as I mentioned, is a way for you to establish a baseline of configuration that is that you declare that it has always to be there. The very important thing with declarative policies is that allows you to leverage AWS organizations to attach the policy. In this particular case, it's a specific attribute on EC2. As I mentioned at launch, declarative policies support EC2 attributes. So in this case, we're look, uh, looking at the example of a snapshot of for EBS. So it's basically saying that any public sharing for this EBS volume uh, snapshot it needs to be private at all time. Independently of the API that is called, if we, AWS tomorrow releases a new way for you to make a public snapshot, it's going to be inherited by this policy, so it's always going to be blocked. Regardless of the individual, let's say, configurations that are on each account. So you can deploy this and make sure that the API calls at the control plane are being governed centrally by the AWS. So this is very powerful because let's say that even though if I have an internet gateway, if I actually try to do it, if I have to, for example, have public access to my VPC, this is another attribute that could be configured with declarative policies, you can centrally govern that and say, no, this is not possible, regardless of the configuration that is on the member account. Now, moving into detective controls, we, we spoke about how you can have these primitive mechanisms, but how you can actually detect if something actually got deployed, right? Or if it is something changed because we have some kind of event there. So AWS Config gives give us the capability for us to have a recorder that is going to keep tracking changes on every resources that is supported. So that way, you can run evaluations. And how do you run evaluations are through AWS Config rules. A comfort rule is basically a statement. It could be a managed rule, could be a custom rule that you can create using Guard or using Lambda. 
So basically what it allows you is to run continuous evaluations and keep this continuous compliance on your resources. And if something is out of compliance, it will let you know and it will aggregate the findings. Now, if you want to remediate those, it could be automatically or manually performed. And that's when the integration with things like System Manager allows you to use documents to run those automations. And this is how you can not just detect, but actually have this self-healing capability within AWS. Now, config, config rules, as I mentioned, we have almost 500 config managed rules that you can leverage for pretty common use cases like rotating your keys, having versioning enabled. You can create your own custom rules, and then you can also have conformance packs. Conformance packs is basically a group of AWS config rules. This could be provided by AWS as templates, so you go into the service and you have multiple um, conformance packs that you can leverage for common use cases, PCI DSS, for example, uh, operational best practices for S3. Those kind of scenarios are there with conformance packs. And if you have a particular use case or a particular set of rules that you want to apply, because it's the following internal guidelines, you can do that as well. And these are immutable, meaning that if you deploy these at a member level accounts from a delegated administrator account on config, it cannot be changed. The last one is proactive controls. Leveraging AWS CloudFormation hooks allows you to run templates as policy evaluations, leveraging code within your infrastructure as code deployments, making sure that you are following the guidelines that you need. In this particular case, we're enforcing that a specific configuration needs to be on S in every S3 bucket that gets deployed, meaning that if something is not following that guideline, you can have two different actions. You can either have a warn that just give you a warning, but it still gets deployed, or you can just totally fail the deployment of that control. So even from uh, before it gets deployed, you can run these proactive evaluations. And it's very friendly in terms of developers. If you're using cloud formation, for example, it will give you like this. Uh, it, it give you a reason why it got failed, and it will roll by the process. They also cloud formation will integrate for things like Terraform. Uh, so if you're deploying your, your resources with Terraform, you can also leverage CloudFormation hooks. And how do all of these kind of actually bundles together? I mentioned Control Tower is the way that you can deploy controls, but focusing on security, Security Hub is the tool that will allow you to aggregate different findings. In this case, for detective mechanisms, we can leverage config or things like firewall manager that is powered by config, and our native solutions on AWS, like Guard Duty Inspector, actually aggregates everything within Security Hub. And Security Hub can have event-based mechanisms for run also remediations, leveraging system managers, and we'll take a look on how that looks in a sec. Now, in this particular case, yeah, in this particular case, we have our AWS console, we got into AWS config, and we're gonna look into an example of how we can leverage this detective mechanism that I mentioned. We go to resources, we're gonna find that we, we can look, filter for all the resources that are being tracked. In this particular example, we're gonna look into an EC2 instance configuration. We run the resource inventory, and now we, just, we get all the details of this, we get all the uh, instance metadata from this JSON file that you look at here. If I'm focusing in a specific example, we want to look at the instance metadata version of that particular EC2 instance. In this case, it's telling me that it's optional. This means that it is running version one or instance metadata in my EC2 instance. And this basically is that it's not required for me to have some kind of token to communicate with that instance. So this is a best practice. So how can I make sure that at least I'm running some evaluations to make sure that this is being enforced? You can either have a managed rule. As I mentioned, we have almost 500 managed rules for different use cases that we can leverage. In this particular case, we're going to focus on a custom rule that we created just for this example. If we log into this, we can see that if we added this rule, we have the capability for leverage guard as a language. This is a domain-specific uh, language for, uh, for this kind of rule editing for uh, configurations and controls. It is telling me that the value that I require on a specific value keeper of the JSON file has to be required. It cannot be optional. So this means that I need to enforce it, right? If I go in there, this, basically I have this rule and I can have remediation actions. Once I have a remediation action, I can apply that either manually or automatically. And let's take a look on that one. I have this particular that is telling me that it's not complying. If I want to take a remediation, I can manage this remediation, tell me, okay, if I'm running version one, and I actually want it to be version two, I can enforce this script uh, from System Manager that is managed and there are multiple available. I can just have a role that has the permissions required for me to run operations on behalf of System Manager. 
And then when I go to this particular, I can just say the remediation. This is manually, just for the example, but this can be triggered on event change. So every single time it detects that it's version one, it automatically can self heal and remediate. Very simple, if you go to System Manager, as you know, System Manager is our operations hub. There are multiple things that you can do in here. Focusing on the change management tools on automation, you can see that there was an automation trigger automatically from AWS Config that is basically giving all the steps and all the API calls that were done to actually fist, fix this. So basically, I was able to run a detection mechanism on my EC2 instance. This could do at scale. This is a basic example of how it should look. And now, remember that it used version 1. Now it's telling me that it's required, so I'm following the best practices that I need to follow in this example. Eventually, a few minutes, uh, it will show me that it's a compliance status, but it's already there. I mentioned about conformance packs. You can have your own group of rules. There are different templates that you can leverage. As you can see here, you have operational best practices. You have security best practices. You can follow specific standards. But these are templates that you can create upon. Uh, so if you want a managed solutions for you to create those, for you to deploy those templates on an organization standpoint, you can leverage Security Hub. There are multiple Security Hub uh, security standards that can be followed. In this particular case, we are delegating the administration of this organization to one particular account, that this is going to be my security account. I have all the pre permissions configured. And when we go to the conf central configuration management, it's telling me that for my whole organization, I aggregate in fundings from Security Hub centrally. So basically, I can deploy this, and every new account will enable Security Hub on the required regions that I establish. I deploy the security standard is security best practices for AWS. It's telling me that an 80% of controls passed. I still have a few things that I need to fix. It's going to give me the assets with most findings. It will be the accounts, the severity, the resources, any specific that you can actually drill down from Security Hub. It's going to tell me the controls that I have in place, which ones pass, which ones fails, which ones are looking into, for example, which ones are critical. It gives me the priority prioritization that sometimes is hard for customers to see, OK, I have all these findings. Where should I focus? So this is one of the powerful mechanisms and tools that we have available on Security Hub. You can either filter by fail, by pass, as unknown. Basically, that's because it's still gathering data from the recollection. And it's to give you, for example, if it is critical or not. No? One of the things that we also have, I mentioned this is a foundational security best practices uh, that we can just see the results from here. And it have multiple other, like CIS, for example. It also have insights. You can create your own insights based on, for example, config rules if you want. These are pre-built uh, insights that you can have. It's going to gather information if you want to take a quick look. It integrates with other third-party tools as well. It also ingests findings from other secure, uh, security posture management services. And it has these findings by region. So you cannot just look at the multi-account strategy and the findings on every single account. You can also aggregate those on every region as well. If you have multiple services, it will integrate this. Like, for example, if you're running Inspector as well, Macy, it will also get in this single pane of glass. It will tell you the resources and all these things. Now, if we go back to config, as I mentioned, at the very back end of Security Hub, are actually for those security standards, are actually running AWS config rules. But you will see that there is a prefix that says Security Hub. So basically, those rules are managed by the service. And it is actually running evaluation checks on your behalf. And you can have that. You don't have to be concerned about that. Of course, if there are different services that you want to leverage or different controls, you can also deploy your own, and you can have those integrated as well. All right. Uh, if you want to chat a little bit more, we welcome you at the Cloud Operations Kiosk. We have one for governance and compliance specifically. So thank you very much for your time, and thank you.